Ladies and gentlemen, this is Gail Morgan welcoming you to the Libertarian Counterpoints Knuckleheads of Liberty podcast. You've heard their point, now listen to the counterpoint. Welcome to the Knuckleheads of Liberty podcast. Uh, we're coming at you on April 7th of 2021. Uh, again, we're about uh, two and a half months or so into the Biden administration, or I guess uh, almost three months. Uh, anyways, but uh, somehow we have survived. Um, but there is still a lot going on, uh, a lot of crazy stuff. And one of those things is the aftermath of, of the whole George Floyd police incident, the whole, um, you know, Derek Chauvin trial that's going on right now and so we want to talk a little bit about that this episode uh but before we get into that uh let me introduce you to our panel in our upper left hand corner we have our screaming eagle freedom tim ever he is a pilot in the state of california in our upper right hand corner we have leon the word brathwaite last word in liberty he is a retired engineer in the state of california and my name is jason B, and i'll be your host today <laughs> so uh eric chauvin trial uh for the whole knee on the neck thing, you know, with uh, George Floyd that led to uh, almost a year of unrest, uh, you know, with all of the uh, BLM protests and the ensuing riots that also happened in a lot of major cities. Um, it's all coming down to this trial right now. And Derek Chauvin is, uh, he's already been um, uh, let go as a police officer and mm -hmm. The, I think the other three police officers as well. Um, yes. And George, uh, or Derek Chauvin, I, I believe he is being charged uh, separately from those others right now. Uh, yes, he is. On this. Yeah. And so he's being tried right now. And this is kind of the whole uh, shebang. But the big question is, is, you know, what actually happened there? And is there a reasonable doubt about what happened? We've certainly all seen the pictures of uh, Derek Chauvin with his knee on George Floyd's neck while he's saying, I can't breathe. Um, and then of course he died. And that was uh, nine minutes uh, of that is what occurred. Um, of course, that was what the media showed us. And now we have a trial and you know, we're, a lot of us have seen that there's a little bit more to it and some of the uh, video as well. Um, you know, there was uh, George Floyd saying, I can't breathe before he was even put on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> yes, true. and uh, there was uh, there was some resisting uh, instructions and trying to get him into the car, uh, which is what wound up uh, causing him to be on the ground. So th this has been a huge issue. The city is trying him for, I believe, uh, uh, is it, uh, it certainly they're calling it a homicide, but I'm not sure if it's a. Uh, uh, um, is it like third degree murder or something? It's, 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 third, it's third degree murder and manslaughter he's charged with. Okay. And so, so that's really what comes down to the question, you know, is this something that uh, was way out of bounds uh, that Derek Chauvin did? Uh, is it sufficient for him to be essentially put away for life in jail? Or is this something where, you know, kind of one of the things that happens in the course of, of run-ins with police occasionally? What do you guys think? You know, I didn't, I didn't know. I mean, when I initially um, heard about, heard and read about this, <clears throat> this uh, situation with Derek Chauvin and and George Floyd, I did not know that the knee on the neck it was is part of the police uh, police protocols in terms of trying to subdue a, an, an unruly uh, suspect they are trying to arrest. So. In, in that sense, at first, I was quite outraged by what Chavin did. So, but, but, it, putting a knee on the neck is allowed by the Minneapolis Police Department, in their, their protocols for subduing and, and arresting an, an unruly suspect. The issue then becomes, did Chavin cross the line? Because he did stay on George Floyd's neck for almost nine minutes, if I if I'm remembering correctly, was that too much? Was that where he crossed the line? Because what we are hearing now is that you could, when you use the the, the knee on the neck uh, um, uh, uh, procedure, it should be for probably less than a minute, if I'm if I'm understanding if I'm understanding this correct. But he was there for almost nine. So in that sense. 
you can see where there might be problems for him in the trial because he def to me as far as i can tell he stayed too long on the on the neck and it was way past the what the protocols called for in the in the in the police manuals so i i i i, I still see this as problematic seriously problematic but what is going on here to me is that the media is presenting this of course of white police officer trying to destroy and kill the life and take the life of a black man the the race issue they have to put it front and center and this is very problematic in my mind but the point is nobody is talking about the fact that the knee on the neck was a legitimate was a legitimate uh, police procedure in, 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 in when they're trying to arrest someone. The question is, did Chavin go too far in in administering that particular uh, procedure? I am not sure about the answer to that question. To me, as a civilian looking at the videos, I've looked at many of them. It looked to me like he went too far, but. Maybe there's more to come out. I don't know. We'll see when the defense put on their case. Um, good points, all, all good points. And uh, I, I actually don't really have uh, much to say one way or the other about what's going on in that uh, trial, other than to say that uh, there's, uh, I'm assuming 12 plus maybe some standby people that are going to make the determination and it's up to the uh, prosecution to uh, make a case beyond a reasonable doubt of, of wrongdoing. Uh, and if they can't do that, then uh, they'll have to let the guy go. But however it pans out, I am, unlike my liberal friends, again, on Facebook, the ones that already have this guy uh, who is presumed to be innocent until proven guilty. Exactly. Because, the, because they saw the video, they uh, have, uh, this guy has already been tried. He's been convicted. He's been sentenced and he's even been executed uh, or uh, killed in prison by the other uh, prisoners. The, <laughs> which I thought was rather odd, uh, relying on those wonderful people that are in federal prisons uh, to mete out justice against this um, this uh, horrible um, horrible police officer who um, uh, you know so basically you'll have somebody that raped nine women uh, killing this guy or maybe an, another guy that that was uh, part of five or six um, drug uh, gang related murders, uh, you know, where they were wanting for sure to murder the guy, uh, meeting out justice on this, uh, this uh, s convicted, uh, you know, of course I'm talking in the future here, um, police officer because he's white, you know? And so I, I thought that was all very um, telling. It's like, you know, how people can can want or can express themselves about this kind of thing when I don't care who it is. I give everybody the benefit of the doubt. And um, it's kind of like when people ask me, uh, there was a aircraft accident, for example. And uh, hey, Tim, what do you think about that accident? You know, and, and I've got like I got about that much of the information total information that the that the NTSB is going to get. So in this case, the NTSB is the jury and uh, the prosecution and the defense working to uh, come to some conclusion. And I, I'm going to call it justice. I know that justice is hard to come by in the American justice system, but I'm going to still have faith in it because I. This, what else am I going to have faith in? Exactly. A, a bunch of my Facebook friends that already have this guy tried, convicted, based on their little their little myopic uh, uh, viewpoint. Um, so, uh, just like any other accused, this guy uh, has um, he deserves to be 
uh, considered innocent until proven guilty in a court of law with uh, in front of a judge and jury and with uh, a jury of his peers. So, so there we have it. Um, I uh, th that's what I would recommend. Other, I mean, yeah. Okay, is that a bad thing that I'm going to say? Um, you know, I don't know. I don't know, and, and not that Leon has said that he knows. He's he's got his questions, and he's just brought him out what his questions were, and they are legitimate questions. And I don't think they're the only questions, but I think they're definitely important questions to be ironed out during this trial. And sure. so, so my my um, my great and wonderful liberal friends who have, you know, who have just decided that this guy's guilty, but whether you know it's proven or not they he's guilty in their minds and so therefore he's guilty well okay sorry you're gonna have to work it out uh you know i, I hate to burst your your um how should i say it um lynch echo chamber <laughs> yeah. well yeah it's a yeah oh they're all in an echo chamber there's nobody <laughs> that's going to fight against them and i and certainly not me because i'm not going to get into that that uh uh, road to nowhere that fools errand. I, but um, I hate to burst their their bubble, but um, you know there's a protocol and there's there's a system and uh, oh I know what I was going to call it. I don't want to burst their lynch mob mentality here. Sure. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, just because he's white doesn't mean that he gets to be lynched now to a, like retribution for the lynchings that occurred uh, in the past against black people. And there were plenty of those and for the, all the wrong reasons, but two wrongs don't make a right. And this is uh, something that just has to be watched as it's played out and with, and <laughs> post um, what, what is it when they're, post verdict people are going to have to just suck it up well, no matter what side it comes out on and what side it did. and i know they're not gonna i they're know not that going, that's, that's, and that's just a problem you know they're, they're not gonna if if he's found not guilty yeah if I he's mean, found not guilty if, if he's found guilty there will be rejoicing throughout the nation apparently yeah if, well, if, well, 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 there'll be the riot that's like a, a win of your favorite sports team, and if he if he oh. if he gets off, then there'll oh. be a riot. Yeah, then there'll, there'll be a, riot one yeah. way or the other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You, you yeah. may be right yeah. there, and then and then two more banks in my neighborhood will be burned to the ground, right? Again, right. because of it. And those two banks, when I say burned to the ground, I'm talking about flat. Okay burned yes. to the ground two completely separate entities from george floyd and from some state on the other side of the united states three thousand miles away sure you know, it, it is fiat money that's being burned though right tim so oh, like, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> it's, well it's no i real. wish it's i wish real. actually I, I wish they would have lost some well there may be a little tiny bit because you know they don't carry much cash in a, in a bank are you kidding that's not where they have the cash unlike what they uh, you know when one famous bank robber was asked well why do you rob banks and he said well that's where the money is well that's where the money is yeah <laughs> well that's not true anymore. It's, uh, it's, you know, very little of it is there. I mean, they, they've got some, but, uh, you know, so not enough to make a dent in the trillions of dollars that are out there in the world. But you, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's, it's one of the interesting points, though, that both of you guys brought up is the idea of, you know, uh, I, I think all of us were guilty of this, you know, that we saw this at first and the media gave us one picture. And we didn't see everything in the beginning of this. And, and you know, it's in a way, I, I think the media is largely the villain again, you know, and, and a lot of how this uh, event unfolded and where we are today with this. Um, you know, when, when this first happened, I remember we were all talking about it and I couldn't see how he had his, you know, knee on this guy. And for all this time, I, th th there was no reporting on the fact 
that he was saying he couldn't breathe long before he was put on the ground. Well, I mean, okay, that's the defense right, that's of why. I never knew that until the, until, the trial, until the trial began. I did not exactly. know that. And, and the idea that he's pinned on the ground and saying, I can't breathe, that makes you assume, okay, clearly this guy should have known better. He should have been, you know, he should have uh, 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 lifted this guy up and put him in another position. But he was already saying that before he was, you know, when they were just trying to put him into the police car. So, I mean, the idea that, you know, you know, all of these little bits and facts were shaded by the media for us, where we were only shown little bits to to support a specific narrative. It, it's really done a, a massive disservice to everybody. And it's caused horrific damage. And, you know, this media just constantly gets away. Uh, you know, uh, whether it's CNN, MSNBC, New York Times, they have their narrative. They're not a, a, any more about getting to the truth. It's about yeah. a narrative. And we keep seeing this over and over and over again throughout the Trump administration. And now that Biden is in there, you know, it's just, you know, I, I, one of the things I, I, I guess there's a parallel here, too. When Jacob Blake over in, uh, I, I think, was it uh, uh, Michigan? Kenosha, Kenosha, Wisconsin. Oh, Wisconsin, yes. Um, it, it, before there was even any kind of a finding of facts or anything, uh, Joe Biden was saying he, the police officer should be arrested. And, you know, we, uh, we've clearly seen that, you know, that everything was. You mean, you mean they, Obama? They, no, no, no. It was uh, uh, Joe Biden when he was running for president. Oh, uh, yeah. 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 Uh, um, you know, what, was, what uh, about when Obama, remember when Obama had that guy as some, I think it was a white guy. I'm not sure. But anyway, he said, oh, yeah, he's guilty or something. I can't remember all the details. It was that. it was involving a professor, um, his, his friend, who was uh, um, Walter, um, not Walter, um, Louis, Louis Gates. Henry. Henry Louis Gates is Obama's friend. And he, Henry Louis Gates got arrested at his home. And Obama said that guy, oh, he police acted stupid and blah, 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 and a whole uh -huh. bunch of stuff. I thought it was a, there was another guy, a cop, that did something, a white cop, and I, I, I don't know. Well, the during... cop was white in the case of Henry Louis Gates. Oh, okay. The cop was uh, white. Oh, and the cop did something to Henry Louis Gates. Yes, the cop. Uh, the, see, the cop arrested Henry Louis Gates at his home. Oh. Henry Louis Gates was trying to break into his own home because he had lost his keys. Oh, that's right. That's right. Oh my goodness! And and, okay. and, the, the, and the police officer was just doing his job. Yeah. He asked Henry Louis Gates for his, for his ID. He, he he refused. The police ended up arresting him. Anyway, we get we get enough topic here. Yeah. Jason, I'm sorry. All right. Sorry. Yeah. Well, that, that's okay. But um, yeah, and it, it, it just brings up the the issue though that we do have a, a trial system in this country, and the fact that the media uh, is so irresponsible that they completely. Uh, uh, play against that, you know, to, to sit there and they, they put out a narrative before and just, you know, essentially let the country tear itself apart. Um, it, it's, it's, you know, we, we, then they we get to report on that. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So it's, they, they, they can't lose. They just can't lose. I wonder what it would have been uh, like if, um, oh, and well, I wonder what it would have been like if it would have been a, a white guy who uh, got, uh, uh, killed underneath the knee of a black cop. I wonder, I wonder how things would have panned out, you know, because there is, uh, there's this racial undertone constantly. And then um, I was going to. Well, well, we do know what it was like when a white uh, individual was killed under the knee of a white cop. And that was in the case of, I think the guy's name was Tony Timpa. And that yes. was a guy who was mildly retarded, I think. And um, the, the police pinned the guy down and, uh, it, you know, I, I guess Tony Tippa's family was horrified, you know, to find out that the police had wound up killing him, you know, and they, they didn't know they were joking around as they had the knee on this man's neck. And then they found out he was dead, you know, as right. they called the ambulance. And, you know, one of the funny things was, you know, and, you know, the, the, at least I, I believe I heard on one of the other podcasts, I think it was the uh, uh, one with Adam Carolla and, um, uh, the attorney guy, I can't remember his name at the moment, but uh, Garagos, I think. Uh, uh, he was, uh, they, they were talking about, I believe, Tony Timpa's uh, family was just, you know, they, they couldn't believe it when this whole thing happened with George Floyd because look at all of the attention that this got. Mm -hmm. And when their son died, yeah. didn't care at all. Nobody, ri nobody rioted. Yeah. They didn't have those oh. mostly peaceful protests. You didn't yeah. have none of that. Oh, no, darn. Yeah, didn't fit well, the narrative. Didn't fit the narrative. You know, it's not about the narrative, exactly. Yeah. Yes. 
So, uh, and then that, that whole thing that you're talking about, you know, where he's saying he can't breathe prior to it, and then I can't breathe during it. Uh, so there, that's a little bit of the boy who cried wolf going on there. So exactly. you know, is, is, exactly. the, is the well, cop it, going it, to... It, it, it possibly, and it's possible he couldn't breathe just because he was overloaded with drugs in his system as well, which is something that's also come out during the trial. True. And they're saying, I guess the medical mm -hmm. examiner is saying, that was also a potential cause of death in this case. So the idea that he couldn't breathe may not have had anything to do with the knee or it could have been taken by the officer potentially as well this guy was already saying it so clearly he's just faking it there could be all kinds of things going on here that you know it's hard to know that's all part of what goes into potentially reasonable doubt we're not there hearing all the evidence so it's hard for us to to be sure here mm -hmm. but you know uh, at least see, some of the things we are hearing it it's not the clear cut case it was when the media threw their narrative at us about a year ago so but, it, it, but, but you see, these are the problems we are having, though, Jason. The, the media injects this poison into the, into the discussion, this poison of race into the discussion. And then we can't have a rational discussion about what actually happened yeah. on that day that George Floyd met Derek Chauvin. We can't have a rational discussion about it. Now, look, look for instance, nobody, I did not know that the knee on the neck was, was a legitimate uh, a protocol by a police officer in in the Minneapolis uh, in, in in the city of Minneapolis. I did not know that, and I'm I'm considered a guy. I'm I'm well read. I I follow a lot of things and that kind of stuff. And I did not know that until recently. But they have to. The first thing they inject into it is race. They don't tell us. Well, maybe the, the, even if they had said, well, the police officer was doing this thing. It was legitimate, but maybe he went too far. I could have understood that narrative. Okay, I could have understood that narrative, but before any of that came out, the first thing they told us it obviously was an issue of race. White officer, yeah. dead black person. Obviously, mm -hmm. it was race. Obviously, it was racism, racism in America, and obviously we should have all those mostly peaceful protests all over the country. Come on, yeah. and this is a, nobody could have a rational discussion about this anymore. And this is our problem we have in. We're going off a cliff on this nonsense. Well, it's not well what I, I, I'm sorry, what I hear you saying, Leon, is that uh, if, if there was responsible reporting, you would have heard about as much as you heard pre previous, plus you would have heard that Minneapolis Police Department has this as part of their restraint protocols. Right. And, and so you would, have, you would have that additional information uh, even though it didn't play into the narrative that when you're busy trying to wake the country up to how racist all of us white people are, and we all know how racist we all are, then um, you can't uh, bring up uh, issues that may go against that narrative. Because you bring, right. like I like I tell people, you know, when dealing with people that I have to deal in, in the work environment, everybody wants to justify their own existence. And they do that because, you know, they're, sometimes their jobs are just so uh, dismal that, um, oh, here we go, that, um, uh, you know, they, they have to make excuses for why they're being even employed, and, you know, apparently that, that's because they shouldn't be employed. But anyway, um, <clears throat> So, so the, you know, the media is, is trying to justify their own existence. So they don't do that by telling you that there's uh, there's a protocol in the Minneapolis police department and that's part of the protocol. I mean, you know, even though it's not nine minutes, but I mean, at least they could tell you that, you know, exactly. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're just about to our knucklehead noise patrol. One thing I did want to throw in there as well too, for uh, people is, you know, the, the amount of, uh, things that could be biasing this case as well. You know, they, they announced a $27 million uh, settlement during the jury selection. The selection, so right. The potential that this trial will be biased regardless, whatever happens. And it's possible they that, you know, government may have created a situation for a mistrial. Even yes, this, 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 so. could, this, could, this is certainly going to be appealed on, on that basis. I would think so if he's convicted. Yeah. So, but anyways, we are at the point in our show where we are 
getting ready for our knucklehead noise patrol. And so that's the point where we try and uh, bring it around to something kind of uh, silly that some news media person or a uh, uh, politician might have said. And this time it's AOC, uh, Andrea Ocasio-Cortez. Um, so uh, recently uh, she uh, has sort of flip-flopped in her thinking, I guess, uh, with respect to kids in cages and the border. Uh, so she was uh, recently, I guess, I guess she likes to just speak into her phone and do these weird interview things for by herself. <laughs> I don't quite know what the deal is, but anyway, she loves to talk into her phone <laughs> and share it with the world. And nobody, so, nobody else wants to ask her, so ask <laughs> no, herself. Yeah, exactly. She's going to give her opinion whether anybody's there or not. <laughs> but but uh, this particular time, so she's talking about, uh, you know, now now it's not about kids in cages. Remember before she showed up in a white suit, cried to the fence where there was nothing to see <laughs> yeah. for the photo op. Well, now uh, she's saying that um, this is not a surge. These are children. They are not insurgents. And so... Uh, you know, because everybody's talking about there being a border surge and there being a lot more kids in these cages now than when Trump was was uh, president. And then she goes on to say, and it's not a border crisis. It's an imperialism crisis. It's climate crisis. It's trade crisis. And it's also a carceral crisis. So anyways, uh, <laughs> hey, you guys have any ideas or thoughts on AOC's framing, reframing? Well, um, real here? quick, she might have a thing with the climate deal, because if you've ever been down to Central America, man, that's kind of hot there. And, <laughs> you know, and there, there may be coming up just to cool off. So she may have something there. <laughs> it's some idea. Yeah. Is, you, Go see, ahead, you see, the whole thing, the whole thing, Jason, really, and Julie, is, is, is really a, a crisis a crisis of stupidity and hypocrisy. That's what it is, okay? And what we really need is some insurgents or, or we need a surge of common sense for that woman. This woman is so beyond the pale, is, is, is beyond me. She's such a stupid, oh God, I better not say anything more than that. I might, yeah. I might, I might say one of those words that will have to be edited out before the show is done. <laughs> she needs an insurgency of intelligence. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> yes. Well, you know, the, the, uh, Tim, Tim, Tim is doing a good job of cleaning up my, my words today. <laughs> clarifying. I'm clarifying. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the, the absolute hypocrisy, you know, she, she stands there and makes a show of this when it's Trump, you know, and yes. you know, it's it's the, literally the cage is Obama built and Trump is just, you know, putting the people there who come yeah. across yeah. the border and then you know, suddenly it's Trump's cages. And then uh, once it's Biden again, it's not cages anymore and it's not a surge. It's, and they're yeah, not no, it's holding, it's holding facilities now. It's yeah. holding facilities, not kids in cages. Yeah. They're in holding facilities, yeah. and the conditions okay. are far worse than what Donald Trump was uh, oh, had them they, when Donald Trump had them at, at the border. My God! But they won't let you film them to double check. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, that's about the end of our show today. So, uh, you know, whether AOC is watching and crying or not, we're going to have to <laughs> let it go with that. Um, so, uh, thank you for joining us, and we will see you at the next one. Thank you for watching the Knuckleheads of Liberty. Listen each week in Sacramento on Comcast Channel 17 for Knuckleheads of Liberty on Monday at 5.30 p.m. and the Libertarian Counterpoint Show on Thursday at 8 p.m. Also on YouTube, Facebook, and podcasts everywhere. We invite you to come again next week for the Libertarian Counterpoint Productions.